There is scarcely any woman in all of Canadian history who has a worse reputation than Marie-Josette Corriveau. That's the opening sentence from the Dictionary of Canadian Biography about today's featured ghost. My name is Joel A. Sutherland. I'm the author of the best-selling Haunted Canada series, and this is another one of my videos in the Most Haunted series. These are all videos uh, sharing with you the scariest locations I've ever covered in this series from every province and territory. Today, we're in Quebec, a small town called La Vie. And as I mentioned before, we are speaking about the ghost of Marie-Josette Corriveau. I wrote about her and La Vie in Haunted Canada 4, and this is by far one of the most popular stories I think I've ever written that still to this day, although this book came out quite a while ago, kids and readers of all ages uh, tell me is one of their all-time favorites. So let's dive right in. Uh, Marie-Josette Corriveau was born in 1733, and she married her first husband, Charles Bouchard, in 1749. She was only 16 at the time. They did have some children together and uh, were married for about 11 years before Charles met an unfortunate end. Nobody thought anything mysterious had happened, uh, nobody suspected any wrongdoing, and they didn't even suspect anything odd when Marie-Josette remarried a mere 15 months later. She married a man named Louis-Étienne Dodier, uh, and unfortunately for Louis, he didn't live quite so long as Charles had. He died a mere year and a half later. Now, he was found in the stables, and uh, there were a lot of warning signs this time. And also the fact that he had died so soon after Marie-Josette's previous husband had died also raised a lot of alarm bells. They found uh, Louis with his head caved in and lacerations across his face. Through the trial, because Marie-Josette was suspected of pot potentially having uh, some wrongdoing here, it was discovered and determined when Marie-Josette herself eventually broke down and uh, admitted guilt for his death. Turns out she had used an axe to attack him while he slept in bed, dragged his body into the stables, and hoped that it would look like one of the horses had kicked him and he had died purely by accident. So for this crime, and there was a lot of suspicions now about the circumstances of her first husband's death, uh, Marie-Josette was executed. She was hanged in um, 1763. Now, that wasn't enough. They decided uh, that they should use this case and Marie-Josette as a warning to the rest of the town that you better obey the letter of the law or else you might end up just like her. So after she was hanged, they took her body and put it in a cage. That's right, a cage in the shape of a human body. And they hung it up from a tree at a very busy crossroads, a section where two roads met, in a forest that now today is called La Corriveau Forest, named after Marie-Josette. So they hung it up there, and her body in this cage stayed there for 38 days. Over this time, her body obviously started to decompose, her skin blackened, her hair fell out. Her eyes were picked at by animals. It was a gruesome sight, but it scared people and it was effective. People knew not to mess around with the law in this part of the country. But over time, a lot of people started to complain. First, about the smell as they were traveling through that part of the forest. Um, and then eventually, about something else. Many people started to claim that as they had passed the cage where her corpse was hanging, they saw her eyes suddenly flash open, and her hands reach out through the bars, and she whispered their name as if somehow she knew them, although they had obviously never met before she had died. So this was freaking out the townsfolk. People were going out of their way to avoid this area, and eventually uh, the officials decided they did have to cut down the corpse of Marie-Josette and the cage, but nobody wanted to get close enough to actually open the cage and remove what was left of her body. So they just took the entire cage and buried it in an unmarked location. In fact, it was found many years later, this cage. It was dug up by a farmer by accident, and it's now on display in a museum. 
in Quebec. You can see how creepy that is. So it is on display for anyone to go see. You would think that maybe having cut down the cage and the corpse and burying both would have satisfied Marie Josette, but it did not. And the reports of ghostly activity at this part in the woods only increased. Not too long after she was cut down, a man named Francois Dubé was traveling through the area, and he was headed home when he looked across the river and saw a big bonfire and these odd shapes that looked a lot like demons dancing around. He stood mesmerized and terrified, rooted to the ground, when all of a sudden he felt bony hands choking him from behind. Then a voice whispered into his ear, Take me across the river, Dubé. He turned around and saw that it was the rotting corpse ghost of Marie Josette. He grabbed at her hands, trying to pry her fingers off of his neck, and her skin peeled off, covered in maggots, and it wriggled in his hands. He passed out from fright and woke up the next morning with his wife standing over him, terrified. He had been paralyzed and unable to move or respond for many, many hours. But he and his wife both were lucky that he was still alive. I'm very happy for that, too, naturally. Oh, gives me shivers. It's one of the creepiest stories and one of, I'll admit, my favorites too. Uh, I love a good creepy ghost story with a few little gross details as well. Uh, so there you have it. That's my story from Quebec. I hope you're all enjoying these videos. Make sure to check out the rest. And in the meantime, take care.